Good morning all, CamelbackTrading.org coming to you this Friday morning, February 10th. We are looking at Window Trader's market profile of the ES and SPY. And after buyers, after the bulls gave up a tremendous amount yesterday, right now that's continuing. Remember, we went out with a triple distribution day. And now uh, these gaps are incredible. I mean, uh, again, there's still 75 minutes to go prior to the opening, but... Right now, this would be our 28th trading day. If we gap lower today, it would be our 15th gap out of 28 trading days. You want to talk about short-term emotional trading? You want to know who you're trading against? Yes, there's always long-term players in the market, but this market in the futures market and the ETFs are absolutely being dictated by short-term players. You'll know when there's long-term money in an individual stocks, so when you have bad earnings and a stock that's averaging $20 million a day does $100 million a day and it's down uh, 20% or something. Those are, that's long-term sticky money funds getting out. Right now, we haven't seen that in the futures. This is all short-term players. I want to show you something else, which you can say it's after the fact, but it's not because we traded against it each and every time. This is... The seventh, when the market spiked up, even though we didn't have any single prints that day, the market spiked up. So that's a very visual area. The next overnight was above it. But then look at what happened now on Wednesday, Thursday. Wednesday, told the room, we can't get back above G's high, which is the base of the price spike. There's no more buyers there. Buyer exhaustion. Guess what? Never got there. Very nice short opportunity. Overnight, not uh, on the previous night, got above previous day's high, but guess what? Never got there. Same thing I told the room yesterday morning. If we can't get above G's high from the 7th, buyer exhaustion. We opened. We took a short right before the open, and then look what they did the entire day, and now they're following through. Okay. We talk about excess ends one auction and begins another. Well, look at the excess when they spiked up that day, yet closed below where G's high was. A lot of times it's tough to tell excess, but now that's a perfect example of that. Well, that auction ended at around the 41, again, I'm rounding out, 4180, 4190 level, and look where we are this morning. So let's look at the other ones real quickly. Triple Qs, they're also looking to possibly gap lower. They did the same thing on the 7th, right? Never saw it again. Russell, let's see. Same thing on the 7th, never saw it again. Russell, um, remember, was down in the daily. They never went into balance. Yes, they had an inside day, but that didn't stop the one-time framing down. So at best, you were down to balance. But they came out of that yesterday, obviously, down again. And they're looking to possibly gap lower. Remember, SPY, not ES, but SPY actually took out the previous day's high, closed below the previous day's low for an outside day down, triple distribution day down. So sellers are trying to wrestle control. We're going to be getting to a very important level here as we're bumping up right against the 20-day moving average. We'll see if that provides any relief for the buyers. If it does not, if we get acceptance below the 20-day moving average, you can possibly test last week's low and bring the daily, uh, the weekly firmly into balance. So that remains to be seen. If we don't take out last week's low, we're going to have an inside week. Now, that does not negate the one-time framing up. You'd still be one-time framing up for about six weeks. But again, you can say up to balance since it's an inside week. And that should provide a very good opportunity for next week. Remember, our inside month up so now has failed after being up $10 above last month's high. A lot going on. So what is the game plan for this morning? Again, people will be uh, screaming, gap and go. Well, again, even though we've had uh, 14 gaps this year, you know how many gaps have held the same day? Two. One upside, one downside out of the 14. So if you gapped and goed, you got snowed under. That's why balance rules are a heck of a lot more important to me than balance rules. Look what, uh, I mean, uh, gap rules. Look what happened when we came out of balance yesterday, right? So again, I was calling the daily still balance as of right now. 
I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt. Once we take out today's low, the daily would be firmly down. So game plan for this morning. Depending on the size of the gap, depending on the tempo, volume, or lack of of those two, will determine whether I want to take a short against this or along the first time, maybe against the 20, to just fill the gap. Doesn't mean I think the market's okay, but it might mean they don't hold the gap again. You're going to have plenty of opportunities to short it, regardless. Even if they fill the gap, you have the price probe from yesterday at L's low. Now, if that gets filled, then I would certainly watch for a while until we see what happens up at the next single prints. Remember, we're going to treat this as three separate days. K's high to the day's low, I's low to I's high, and then E's low to the day's high. So it's three separate distributions. So you will have time. Right off the bat, though, it looks like sellers could possibly, possibly have gap and value in their favor. So again, it, uh, that's why if you're in my trading room, you know, 75 minutes before, it's a little hard to try to tell you exactly what we're going to do because a lot of things can change. If the gap's a dollar or less, I might short it the first time against it to see if we get an initial push down. However, if we get good tempo and volume and it looks like it's going to fill it, well, either I won't take the short and or I might take a quick long just to fill the gap and then look for a short against L's low and value low. Very early plays in the trading room. And then on the chart, again, we'll be recapping all this, these charts, tonight for the three indices. Thank you very much for liking and subscribing. So the monthly's still up, right? The monthly won't change for me unless we take out last month's low. Now, did we fail with an inside month up so far? Yes, but it's still only February 10th. So the monthly's up. The weekly is firmly up, Okay. It might be an inside week, but for now it's up, unless we take out last week's low. And then the daily, I called it balance coming into today, but if we take out yesterday's low, the daily would firmly be down. The 20 was at 403.53. It should be higher this morning. So we're going to be, right now, we're going to be probably right up against it. So that could be a pretty visual level for short-term traders, at least the first time. Good luck trading today, and we'll recap the day and the week at 4 p.m.